so much for joining me today. Um, my guests are East Multilingual Helpline um, in Wales, which covers the whole of Wales. And the website is www.multilingualhelplinewales.wales. And the telephone numbers are 0808-801-0720 or a text phone 07537-432-416. I've got three people from the helpline. Thank you so much. I've got Dante, Dawn and Dina. So if we start with you, Dawn, to start with, like, let's talk about how long it's been going and and um, why it was set up, you know, the reasons behind it, because obviously there's lots of helplines uh, around Wales, but this one specifically is to help people who have a language barrier. Is that is that right? Yes, that's right. Um, if we go into a little bit of the history of the helpline, hmm. this was set up as a six-month pilot at the peak of COVID in September 2020. Okay. And that was mainly to address the issue of the disproportionately large impact of COVID on the ethnic minorities in Wales. Yeah. We were all lost as to why that was the case. We only knew that was the case. So this was a response to address, especially the language barrier, if there was any, which was contributing as a factor. Mm. So this was set up with call handlers who spoke community languages. Okay. So that they were able to address anybody in the community who had that as a barrier in terms of understanding what the restrictions were or understanding where and how to seek help mm. for a wide range of issues. And mm. th those could be, uh, say, digital poverty, lack of access to devices during homeschooling, being isolated during COVID and having no ac access to food while they had no family around, or being threatened to be evicted by the landlord at the peak of COVID, though that was not being allowed at that time. So there were a wide range of issues that ethnic minority communities in Wales were dealing with at that point. So so it was like a pilot um, that was set up for the need then. Did yes. you think it was going to... And here we are, 2023, and it's just gone from strength to strength, hasn't it? Absolutely, because what happened during those six months of the pilot was the need for such a service provision was established. Mm. By the end of six months, which is very little times, if you think of a new helpline to establish itself within the community, to make itself known among people, uh, we started from zero. So to see what works, what doesn't work, how does it work, how can we make it work better? That itself, it took six months, but by the end of it, everybody agreed that there was a need. So yes. since then, we have had different ways of getting funding and here we are 2023 exactly three months down three years down the line wow three years that's amazing so um you've partnered up with citizens advice as well um yes. yeah um tell me a bit about that yeah so after the initial pilot phase was over we were successful in getting funding from the community lottery and it is in this stage from 2021 that Citizens Advice joined us at, as partners. We were already referring clients to them even when we were in the pilot phase because during, the, during our pilot phase, they also established an e-referral pathway. Okay. So we were already e-referring clients to them. See, this is all the beautiful response that also comes when face-to-face -face services are shut down. Yeah. People find ways and technology helps to bring yeah. people together and put the support in place. Yeah. So what we were already doing anyways in the pilot phase then became more formalized as they joined as partners in the next phase. And we also have uh, other organizations who've joined in as partners in this phase. And um, yes, I, I, I should say it's going well, because even when now the face-to-face -face services and drop-ins have opened, people are still calling us. Mm. Yeah, well, that's that's really good, isn't it? Um, so, so tell me which languages you speak then, guys, because that's really interesting, isn't it? Let's go Dante first. So I speak uh, Tigrinya uh, Amharic. Uh, Italian and uh, obviously Arabic, which is 
Eritrean kind of dialect, but uh, it's kind of hard to say Arabic and just generalize it because there's various uh, dialects and accents of Arabic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are languages and obviously English, but I don't tend to include that. <laughs> okay, how about you, Dawn? I speak what I thought is Hindi, but all my Pakistani friends says this is also Urdu because there's a lot of oh. common uh, terms we use in both languages. So I can yeah. speak to people from either part. I also speak Bangla or Bengali. Um, I speak the pure form or Shuddha Bangla, as they call it. Yeah. Uh, however, we have many clients who speak, speak the Sileti accent and they can understand me. I can understand them. So. Yes, Bangla. Hindi. Wow, wow. And um, what about Dina? We're just talking about um, which languages uh, that you talk on the helpline, if you're there. Hi. Yes. Hiya. Um, I speak also the same as um, Dawn, Urdu and Bengali. And um, Dawn speaks the Shuddha Bengali, where I speak the Sileti dialogue. dialogue. Wow. So um, between both of us. Well, I think between all three of us, we speak uh, eight, nine different languages. Mm. And that must be really comforting uh, for people to be able to speak in their first language dialect, you know, and have somebody on the other end of the phone. It must be really reassuring, you know, that they can really communicate to. What kind of, any of you can answer this question, um, what kind of issues do you people call the helpline for um, is there, and obviously we're in a cost of living crisis now, we've been through COVID, so obviously I feel like people are having quite a difficult time at the moment, and I just wondered what kind of issues that you guys have to face and ha have to deal with, because obviously it must be quite stressful for you as well, like if you're, obviously I've been a support worker myself as well, so sometimes when you're dealing with these things you must have to take care of yourself so let's let's talk about like some of the issues that you're seeing at the moment that people can ring in say if somebody was listening now and they might not be listening if they don't understand English but they might have a friend that does that's listening and they think oh I could pass that number on to that person because they might not know what they can ring about there is a vast range of issues and yes. because we cover all of Wales um the issues, some of them can be quite localized in the sense some areas have a typical mix of population. And then, say, for example, in the areas where we have a large majority of asylum seekers and refugees being settled from a certain country, and then we have the issues around those. In other areas, it could be that they are have been settled, but there are very few ethnic minorities and they do feel isolated. And then there's issues around those. Um, at the current moment, we are obviously getting to see the tailback of COVID because things that had been pushed aside because of COVID in some ways are now coming back yeah. with an intensity that we probably imagined, but we didn't expect it to get this bad, did we? So, mm. um, say, for example, a typical example. We've got so many case studies, we can pull out any out of the hat. Um, we are international students, myself and my husband living with two children. Uh, my husband's working and I am studying. Our landlord is threatening to evict us uh, because he had served, uh, he had requested us to leave, but we have not found an accommodation that fits our bill. And since it's been more than two months, he's now threatening he will evict us. Typical case. Yeah, yeah. Not COVID related, but yes, mortgages have gone up. Landlords who have been renting the properties want to sell sometimes and evict a lot of tenants. And there is a housing crisis going on, as we know. Yes, yeah. Especially in parts of South Wales. So lots of issues around how can you support us? I'm staying with the family of a friend of mine and I have my own family. We cannot live in the same house anymore because it's overcrowded, but we are not being able to find the right accommodation. How can you help us? Okay, so yeah, the housing crisis. Um, 
a few weeks ago, if listeners uh, tuned in, I, I did actually have um, Acorn in, you know, that the housing union um, who do help people. Um, and we talked all of, around this, you know, how difficult it is for renters and people who are in insecure accommodation across all of Wales and all of the UK. I mean, obviously, there needs to be some changes. So I guess if somebody rings up with those kind of things, then you refer them on to um, shelter or, you know, those services that can really support and help them. Um, because it's a very common issue, isn't it? Um, the insecure housing is a massive issue, especially now, like you say, we've been through these multiple <laughs> crises, and we're in the middle of this big cost of living crisis. Yes, we also uh, refer them internally to our teams uh, within East, and okay. they do advocacy support. Okay. So, say for example, um, the other projects within East, the family links projects within East, or the children and young people, a CYP team who had a massive, yeah. uh, big annual conference a few days ago. Yeah. Uh, they do some really good work in supporting families, advocating for them, mm. holding their hand through these turbulent times, mm. and just sometimes making them aware of what they're entitled to. Yeah, because everything changes so quickly as well, I think, you know, and then you've got this language barrier as well which is what east is so good at doing you know um and that's that's great you can you can feed into those other projects so it's like there's more support for these families and these people so they and then that's obviously bringing them into the community and 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 making those connections which is so important aren't they absolutely also we uh, work very closely with the team that's swansea based and supports uh, asylum seekers and refugees yeah uh, so the sanctuary team, as we call it, um, we get loads of calls from their clients as well. Mm -hmm. And on top of what support is already being provided through the sanctuary team, if there are areas that we could help, say, for example, making referrals to food banks, that's also yeah. something we're getting to see a lot. Yeah, that's something that we can do from the helpline without contacting our sanctuary colleagues. So those are the things, again, we support them with, or if it's something that the citizens advice can support them, we refer them directly. Mm. Okay. So it's all working together seamlessly, yeah. putting the client at the center of our service. So that's the beauty of East. And that's exactly the ethos of our helpline that the client is at the center, whatever needs to be done, we do it. If it's within our capacity, we do it, whichever way 